it's Katie here. You've just been watching some photos of my latest beading creation, a beaded snow globe. I should probably mention, I say my latest, but this is October 2020, so if you're watching this at a later date, I'll have created a few more things by then, I know. Anyway, I've put together this video primarily for people that have the tutorial for making the snow globe. You see, in that, I started writing an introduction in which I was explaining that there's a lot of different options for this project. So you can make exactly the whole thing as you've just seen in the photos, but there's also a few elements that you can decide to leave out or maybe alter in some way. And the reason that's important is because it will determine how many beads you need, which are the techniques you're working with, and how much time you're spending on this. So that means you can really adapt this project to suit what you want to do with it, what your beading skills and your budget, time constraints, all that kind of thing, what they are. So it's quite personalized in other ways, in other words. Anyway, I realized that the easiest way to really explain all of that was by showing you, because it's pretty difficult to convey everything just in photos. So I thought I would do that in a moment, but I also thought I would talk a little bit about the design ideas behind this, because whenever I talk to other beaders, the question that people always, always ask me is how do you come up with your designs? So I thought uh, this is actually one where I, I can talk a little bit about that and, uh, you know, hopefully answer some of those questions that you've all been asking me. So on that topic, I'm going to show you uh, a couple of other projects which actually fed directly into this design. The idea is something that I've had in my head for maybe two years, I think. I was trying to remember the other day exactly how long, because basically uh, somebody in one of the online beading groups to which I belong suggested a snow globe project. Um, I can't remember what other pattern I had just produced at the time, but whatever it was, this lady said, oh, wouldn't a snow globe be lovely? And I completely agreed with her. Uh, but back then, it's, uh, it was something I, I didn't quite know how to tackle, really. So I did what I often do, filed the idea somewhere in my mind, and I knew that it would come about at the right time if it was going to. Um, basically, ideas evolve a lot with me based on other projects. So quite often I'm beading one thing and during that process I'm thinking, oh, actually, it would be really good if I took that in this direction. So that's what then leads to the idea for the next project that comes along. And that's exactly what happened here with the snow globe. So let me show you the projects that fed into this and then I'll come back and just say a few more words on the design process that I think you will find helpful if you've got any aspirations towards designing your own projects. So believe it or not, the idea for my snow globe actually evolved from my Halloween lantern here. Now, um, as I said, the snow globe is actually something that somebody suggested to me, oh, probably a couple of years ago now, and it was an idea that I liked, but as so often happens, at the time, I didn't really have the understanding to make it. So it's, it's hovered away in the back of my mind. And it was uh, earlier in 2020 when I came up with the idea of making lanterns. Initially, I was actually thinking Christmas lanterns, but then I realised that Halloween was going to come up first. So I've actually ended up making this Halloween lantern before I started on the Christmas lanterns. They are on their way, but I suppose explaining that maybe explains a little bit about how I managed to jump from a Halloween lantern over to a snow globe. Basically, I had some thoughts of Christmas in my mind, and it was really as I was working with these crystal beads and uh, the crystal thread that I suddenly realised I had been able to create a glass effect with the beads, you know, as near as is ever going to be possible. And I think it was the glass of the snow globe that had mostly been the stumbling block when I was thinking about the idea initially. So, light bulb moment. 
suddenly I can create glass. So the next thing was thinking about the shape and that came really easily actually. I did need to just test my idea but I immediately thought that I ought to be able to create something vaguely resembling a ball. I mean you're never going to get a perfect sphere in beads. Well I say never but who knows what the future might hold, what might evolve. So I did a little test run and made these little beaded beads and um, I actually turned them into a class because I just thought, well, why not share an online class and let other people make those as well. Um, but that was basically to just confirm my suspicions that I had a technique I could use for making the globe. So that was it, really. Um, the ideas all came into shape. The base of the globe is fairly standard, um, I say standard, but I've made a lot of beaded boxes, a lot of dimensional structures, so it just uses common techniques that I'm used to working with on those and it wasn't too hard to do. But as with any design, it's never a 100% straightforward process, so the week I spent designing and creating the snow globe was certainly a bit of an adventure. Okay, so I've just shown you the projects that directly led to me thinking, I know, I'll make a snow globe right now. Um, but let me talk a little bit about what happens next. I mean, coming up with the idea is one thing. Testing a few techniques, as I did with the beaded beads, is another important process. Now, for me, for some projects, I don't need to do a lot of prior testing because I'll be using techniques that I know are tried and tested from other projects that I've made. So, I mean, that part varies. This snow globe, I spent about a week actually sort of designing and making my actual globe. Um, I had quite a good amount of beading time each day, but not crazy, crazy time. Um, I was doing other things and, and I was sleeping as well because that's the other thing people always say to me. Katie, do you actually sleep? Well, yes, I do. It's, <laughs> I need my sleep. But anyway, so that process took about a week in total. And it was a bit of a roller coaster, if I'm honest. Uh, but that's not unusual for creating a new design. And in fact, as with a real roller coaster, I think part of the fun of the design process is in this excitement this feeling of being slightly on edge and you're not quite sure what's going to happen next. Um, so there's a certain danger in there. I mean, not the life-threatening kind of danger, obviously, but imagine the frustration if you spent a week creating something and you get to the last section and it just won't work and you cannot figure out how to make it work and that is basically a week's worth of time and effort and ideas completely wasted, useless. So there's always that kind of danger lurking. Every time you come to a new element, it's, uh, is this gonna work out? If it doesn't work, can I devise another way? Um, do I have a plan B? What am I gonna do about it? So you've got all those things going on whenever you're designing a, a big project. Now with this one in particular, it was quite hard getting out of my own head in a sense. I mean, a snow globe's a pretty common object. I would imagine most people probably have some concept in their mind of what a snow globe looks like. And certainly, because I'd spent a lot of time thinking about this idea and sort of mentally planning before I got the beads out, I had quite a clear picture in my head. And that's the worst position to start as a base for designing because you are pretty much guaranteed that what happens with the beads is not going to match up to what is in your head. Basically, you can refine the image in your head until you've got something that's pretty well perfect and it just doesn't really happen with the beads on the whole. So, as the design was taking shape, I was finding there were times when I'm thinking, hmm, that's not quite what I imagined, that's a little bit disappointing. And it's really easy to get frustrated and maybe just actually walk away at that point and, and give up on the whole thing. So a lot of the design process is about keeping faith in yourself and in your ideas. 
and just taking it in baby steps. So literally one step at a time, one move forward, add the next part, add the next part, and trust that at the end, everything is gonna to come together in a way that you're pretty happy with. And I, I am pretty happy with my snow globe, actually. Um, there were a lot of points when I didn't think I was going to be, and it's actually quite hard releasing the idea that you are not going to get a perfect sphere out of beads and you're not going to get a sphere that you can see through in the way you can a real glass snow globe. So I like to think of mine as more of a, a blizzard going on in there. Imagine you've really shaken the snow up and you can't quite see through clearly uh, to the forest and the gingerbread house in the centre of that. But uh, anyway, I will leave that to you to decide because as I'm about to explain, if there are elements of this that you're thinking, well, to be honest, don't tell Katie, but that's a bit rubbish, probably they're things that you can leave out. Um, so there, there are variations that you can create here to work to your own strengths and work to the, the bits of the design that you like. So uh, coming back full circle to where we started, this is why I've made this video so that I can actually show you the snow globe in detail and explain all the different elements within it and uh, you know what, what you might want to bead, what you might want to leave out. So this will make sense of the introduction in the pattern if you've already got the PDF tutorial. If you haven't got it, then actually this is also a good way of you getting to know what will be involved so you can decide whether it's a project you'd like to have a go at yourself or not. And in the, the little description down below, I will add in the link to this PDF. I'll also add in the links to the Halloween Lantern and the Beaded Beads class that you've seen, just in case those are things that you want to try out as well. So let's get on and, and show you the details of the snow globe now. So here it is, my beaded snow globe. And I just want to give you a closer look and show you, for anyone who's already got the pattern, I said in the introduction that there are a lot of different variations that you can try. So there's bits that you can leave out if you want to, uh, whether that's because you want to save on time or because they're using techniques that you're maybe not so comfortable with, or even just that you actually want to save on the number of bees you're using. So lots of options here. And I thought it was easiest if I actually take you through them all. So first up, let's start with the globe itself. Now, obviously there are limitations to what you can achieve with beads. I mean, maybe one day I or somebody else will overcome some of those limitations. But for the moment, the globe, I use the term more in inverted commas, is really actually a dodecahedron or part of that. And the nature of the seed beads means that you're never going to get this fully see-through effect as you would with a, a real ball of glass in a real snow globe. So what I tried to do um, I think this is going to show up slightly on camera, but it, it looks better in real life, was add trees like a forest effect inside my globe. So you have a sense that there is something inside of it, even though you can't tell what necessarily. So that is actually one of the options. Um, I am perfectly prepared to accept that there may be some people who don't even like the globe structure. So you could just leave that off altogether. Let's take that off and I'll show you why you might want to do that. Because inside here we've got a little gingerbread house. And just that gingerbread house on the decorative stand actually would make a lovely Christmas decoration all on its own. Particularly when you add in the tea light, uh, you will have seen the effect of the light on in the little slideshow at the start of this video. So we'll come back to that in a minute, but let's look a little at the globe. So with it off, you can see this forest of trees inside. Now, another option would be that you still decide to make your globe because you, you want that full effect, but you decide that the trees don't show up enough, so you don't have to add those inside. That will save you quite a few beads, 
just by not bothering to add in your fir trees. Of course the other option is that you just make the fir trees and use them to decorate gift tags or Christmas cards or something else. So in effect you've got a little pattern in itself just within these individual beaded fir trees. It's probably worth also talking a little bit about techniques for this. The fir trees use brick stitch. It's just basic brick stitch with some shaping and it's pretty straightforward to do. I've got a, a comprehensive guide on that so there's nothing difficult in all of that. You might be thinking that the globe is incredibly complicated to make. Well in fact it's not. You're literally going to just be using circular peyote stitch. So again, it's, it's a fairly basic beading technique going on there. Certainly nothing in any of this section that requires you to be of an advanced level. Uh, you've got quite basic techniques going on and as you just saw, you can also take the online class and learn how to make the beaded beads if you want video demonstrations showing you how all of this globe structure comes together. So that's a couple of options I mentioned, leaving off the globe or leaving out the fir trees. Now if we put that to one side and come and look more at this base structure, we've got the gingerbread house here and while we're talking techniques it's worth saying that this is actually made entirely in even count peyote. Just a little bit of brick stitch to shape these triangle ends. But we're not using fancy dimensional beadwork here, we're actually using really simple techniques again for the whole of this. And the only factor you need to consider is really your own artistry. I will be using you to ask to I will be sorry, I will be asking you to use a little common sense and um, well, I would say free form, but it's not that free form. It's just artistic license is probably a better term, as you are attaching your gingerbread house. So again, no complicated or advanced level techniques in all of this. Now the part that you can adapt in this section is the tea light. So if I just turn this over, you can see we've got a tea light sealed in underneath. Uh, you can see now that this looks lovely without the tea light on, but if I do just switch it on, it will add another dimension to the project. So that's another area that you can think about. Do you want the tea light or not? If you don't want to use the tea light, then you don't need to make all of this casing structure underneath. So that will save you both time and beads. And that is the third option that I talked about leaving out when I was writing the pattern instructions. So if you are following your tutorial and you're thinking about what of this you want to make and how you're going to go about it, have a read through everything so you can see what techniques are involved in each little section. You've just seen what would happen if you left out certain parts of this. So use that information to decide what you want to do with your own project and uh, then start getting together your materials. And I've told you how many beads you can not bother to get, as it were, if there's elements of this that you're not going to add into your own design. So lots of options to cater for however much time you've got, whatever budget you've got, and even just for the techniques that you feel comfortable doing. So all that remains, I think, is for me to wish you well in making your own snow globe and do show everyone what you've made. I'm sure you'll make adaptations in colouring and, and so on, and we'd love to see how they turn out. So thank you very much and happy beading.